So if you want to test out the new fleet carriers on the beta server, but you have no idea how to use it, well, stick around because today I'm going to run through everything you need to know to effectively manage your fleet carrier. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Antwerth Astronomy. So today we're going to take a look at the fleet carriers that are currently running on the beta server and we're going to run through basically everything you need to know. What we have here in front of us is the main interface when you land on your new fleet carrier. You have to go to one of the systems that sells the fleet carrier. You can see those on the galaxy map by basically going in here, making sure you have services selected from the list and here you can see carrier vendors. This is where they're sold or you can have carrier administration you need to be in one of these administration systems in order to make changes to your carrier. So keep that in mind, though they might not show up initially. So I'll post a link in the description to systems where there are no vendors and where there are no uh, administrations. At least all the vendor systems have administrations as well. Once we open up the main services, this is what we're greeted with. And this is essentially like the station interface, but just with things moved around. We have a crew lounge here. We can hire crew members. We have a redemption office that's a interstellar factor for all intents and purposes. We have a shipyard that should be very familiar to people where you can store your ship, you can transfer your ship to it, or if you have decided to, you can also offer ships for sale. Security trading, that's your black market. You have commodity market, that's a commodity market like any other market, where you can set up orders. Well, if any orders were set up, again, by your choice, you can then have that running in there. Carrier management, we're gonna go into that. Over here you have your outfitting, your livery, your advanced maintenance, where you can do repairs, restock limb perch, restock SRVs and fighters, that kind of stuff. And then finally, you have remote engineering, where you can access the blueprints you have pinned from your engineer. Let's start by talking about your tritium storage here. Tritium is the new fuel you will need to jump. Now, in terms of jump range, it is dependent on how heavy your ship is. I'll come back to that in a second. But it seems if your ship is fully loaded, full cargo hold, going 500 light years, you're going to be spending, I think, around 500 tons of fuel. However, if your ship is lighter, it is going to reduce less. Like the current loadout I have, I can jump around 500 light years for like 330 something tons of fuel. So a significant reduction in fuel consumption. You'll need this in here. And as you can see here, you have the option to donate. So if you are visiting a fleet carrier, you can donate uh, it to it. Alternatively, you can, as I have here, if you go to your inventory and go here to transfer, I have 512 tons of tritium lying in cargo. So if I wanted to, I could take some of that tritium, transfer it over to my ship. There you go. Now this tritium is in my cargo hold and I could now oops, go in here and I could donate it. Let's go and talk about the rest of the setup. When you go into fleet carrier management, this is what you're first greeted with. If we go into the summary, this gives you a quick overview of what's available on your ship and how much cargo you have left. Up here in the corner, you can see that you have a capacity. That is essentially the, the storage capacity inside your ship. So by default, you have access to 25,000 tons, equivalent to 25,000 tons of cargo inside this. As you begin to add stuff to the cargo or add services, they're gonna take up space. So this is why this is all not just storage, you also use it to install additional services onto the ship. And here you get a breakdown of what your capacity is being used at. You can see right now I have no modules or no ships for sale. So that means I'm not using anything to store my ships. Note that this is not storing ship in the shipyard. That is not included here. Then you have uh, market used. That is how much cargo you actually have. You might remember we had the 512, we took out a bit, so we had 481 tons left in our cargo. That's shown here. Market allocated, that is if you set up a buy order to buy stuff on the commodity market, it will allocate space for that commodity so that if people come and sell, it makes sure that there is enough space to actually store that material on the carrier. Then you have installed services. As I said, as you install your services, they're gonna take up space. And that is what you see here. I'm using just shy of 4,000 uh, units of, st of storage space for the services I have at the ship. And then finally, we can see how much free space is available. Let's move on and let's have a look at the navigation panel. Here you can see your current location. 
your tritium reserves, how much is in your tank. This does not include in cargo hold, this is just in the tank and your current jump capability. If I open up the galaxy map, I could then go and you need to open this from this menu. If you just open the normal galaxy map, it doesn't work. Let's say I wanted to jump out to a system, let's say Buran, Buran is right here. I could just click here and I could set the carrier to jump to that system and it would drop me at a random planet. Alternatively, I can find a system where we actually have cartography data for like the system here. And I can also select an individual body and ask it to jump to that moon in the system. And then it will then jump after the um, the jump uh, wind up time has gone. Now, when you set a destination, as you can see here, it will now set the destination. So you can see it in here. And it will say the estimated departure, when the ship will actually leave, and also the landing pad lockdown. 200 seconds before the fleet carrier does a jump, all landing pads will be lowered into the ship. They will be sealed off and nobody can dock or undock from the fleet carrier after that point. From that point on, they are committed to the jump. It will then take 200 seconds for the fleet carrier to spin up, when it will then finally make a jump. As you can see here, it is a one hour cooldown from when you select the target, it will be an hour before it jumps. This is to ensure that the people who are on the carrier have time to finish their business and get off if they don't want to follow with the carrier on this jump. After you've completed the jump, there will be a one hour cooldown before you can select the next target. Keep in mind that all these numbers we're talking about now with the cooldowns and everything else that we're going to talk about in this video is subject to change. This is the first day of the first beta, so everything here could potentially be changed, but this is just to give you a quick overview. Next up, we have the budget interface, and this is where you manage all your carrier's finances. Most importantly, here down at the bottom, you have the option to either deposit or withdraw credits from the fleet carrier, and it basically has a secondary wallet you have your own wallet for your main account, for your, where you play yourself, for your commander, but there's also a wallet for the fleet carrier. Just as with the cargo, the credits available in the fleet carrier wallet will be allocated for different projects. So you can see here, for instance, if I had a com some commodity trading, if I had set up commodities I wanted to buy, then the, ca the cash needed to actually pay for those commodities would be allocated here on the commodity trading. Similarly with the secure warehouse, this is the black market. If I set up a buy order on that, market money to ensure that I have the, uh, the funds available to pay for it would be allocated here. Finally, we have the weekly upkeep. You can see here this is quite high because I can basically set a slider saying how big of the total amount of credits in the fleet carrier will I allocate to, um, to keeping paying for the weekly upkeep. Um, and you can see here, I can I could put that down to zero if I didn't want to, and then I would probably get warnings all over the place um, saying that my fleet carrier is about to be decommissioned. But I could also just say, you know what, I'm just going to gain, say, let's 25% and then allocate 25% of the total cash in the carrier to weekly upkeep. That ensures that it always keeps some money in reserve for the weekly upkeep. And then we can see right now I have about half a billion left in the wallet that I'm free to use on other stuff. Talking about the weekly upkeep, it is broken down down here in more detail. Now, right now, you have a core cost that is 10 million credits. And now, again... These are potentially hot numbers. They might be changed later. Core cost, that means if you have no additional services, we're going to talk about those in a second. If you have no additional services other than the ones that comes stock with the carrier, your weekly upkeep will be 10 million. Other than that, you have the acquired cost. And I think this is stuff you have basically already used. So if you like start a service and then stop a service later on, well, it will take the time period that service would online and say, oh, so you spent, uh, you had that online for 10% of a week, then you're going to pay 10% of the upkeep. And that is then going to be put into acquired cost. And this is to make it easier for you to get an overview and say, okay, this is basically things you've already spent on other stuff this week. But what is shown here is currently the running cost for the rest of, um, of the week. Here you have the projected, um, projected cost. This is how much, if you kept all services running for the remainder of the period of the week, how much that would cost. And then of course, hull, in, uh, hull maintenance. This is every time you make a jump. I've only made relatively short jumps, around 30 light years per jump in this so far, but it seems to gain around 100,000 credits per jump I make in maintenance costs to keep this thing running. So that's not too bad. Finally, down here, you have the tariff that you can set. This is essentially how much additional charge you take when objects are being bought at the carrier. Not the commodity market, but everything else. If we go back to the main interface here, you will see that some of these services have small credit icons next to them. And that means that they are subject to, um, to the tariff that you're setting on the ship. So for instance, in the shipyard, if I were to set ships for sale on the ship, 
let's say I want to sell a ship that has a base price on a normal station at uh, 1 million credits. If I have 50% tariff, it will be 1.5 million credits. And as you can see here, also in the advanced maintenance, so that would be rearm, refuel, repair. Now, if I wanted to purchase a limpage here, do notice here, of course, that I'm not getting fined for the tariff because I own this carrier, but guests will have to, um, to pay for the tariff. So they will have to pay, in this case, 202 credits per limpet. And you will, of course, then get the tariff that you have set. Next, we have the commodity trading tab. This is where you control your commodity market, where you set up buy and sell orders. First, we have the total value of everything stored in the carrier. And down here, you have a overview of how much by profit you've made from buying and selling different items on, uh, on the ship. But basically, if you want to set up a buy or sell order, go down here to manage market. You find the item you want to sell. For instance, you can see here, tritium, if I wanted to buy some of that. I can say I want to trade this commodity. I can choose either buy or sell, not both. So one or the other. If I wanted to buy something, I would have to set the buy price. And I really hope they're going to change this interface because this is not the best interface I've seen ever. But basically, yeah, you could sit here and you could then scroll your way to the buy price. You want to pay for it, how much you wanted to pay. And then you could just click apply. And then when everybody docked at the fleet carrier, like if I, uh, if I set this order up now, I should now see that I'm able to sell this to myself. And we can then see here the galactic average and what I'm paying for it. So next up, we have the carrier services. So this is probably one of the most important things you're going to be playing around with in the beginning. The first three we have here is the bridge crew, the commodity trading, and the tritium deport. These three are default. These cannot be removed, but they do not take any upkeep other than the 10 million base upkeep that comes with the ship. So the 10 million are basically paying for these three services. Everything else here is optional and it's something that you can install. Refuel station basically it allows you to refuel your ship. So if you want to have people that option, they can go and get fuel at your ship. Well, you have to, to, uh, to buy this. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Yes, these prices are outrageously high. If you look at the active cost, this is how much it will act cost per week when you keep it active but you can as you can see here you can suspend the service meaning that you only pay the suspended weekly cost and as it is at the moment on the beta server you can only suspend when you're in a system with a carrier administration facility but i'm pretty sure that it's meant to be that you can do this everywhere so i think that's just a bug otherwise it doesn't make any sense and i'm also pretty sure these prices here are not um, representative of what we are actually going to uh, to see when this goes live i sure hope not because these prices are frankly outrageous nobody's gonna pay nine million for having a refuel station at your fleet carrier other than having an initial purchase cost as you can see if i go down to the redemption office for instance there's an initial install cost to install the facility other than that of course there is the uh, the upkeep the suspended upkeep but there's also a capacity requirement Recall that we talked about that. So if I wanted to restore the redemption office, well, I would need to spend 50 units of storage space and I would have to fork over 150 um, million credits to also install it. Now, if you decide to uninstall a facility, you will get the money back. Well, right now you will get some of the money back. However, as stated in here in the handbook, it says that removing a service will recoup 100% of its initial cost. So it seems that that is either a mistake in the, uh, in the documentation here in the handbook or it's a bug that is not giving you the right amount back when you're actually selling the module. Maybe these prices for the modules are also inflated. That could be an explanation um, that if the modules we are seeing for actually buying them is also inflated here in the beta server, then maybe it's actually giving you back what it was supposed to cost, but it's just taking more money than, I don't know. It's the beta, it's a test server, so things are a little weird. But the repair crew, again, gives you access to repair ships on, uh, on the fleet carrier. That's pretty self-explanatory. Armory gives you access to the, um, the rearm facilities. That also includes all the stuff with, um, with SRVs and fighters and limpets and all that stuff. So if you want to be able to restock any of those, you need the armory. The redemption office is essentially an interstellar factor. The only difference is that this is affected by the tariff. So just as with the interstellar factor, you get 25% reduction in the price when you sell any bounty vouchers to it. And then there could be an additional tariff for it being on the fleet carrier, paid to the fleet carrier owner. Secondly, you have a shipyard. Now, without the shipyard, you can still dock your ships, but you cannot store any ships. But the shipyard also gives you access to sell ships. So if you want to offer people um, some ships that they can buy at your fleet carrier, then you need the shipyard. We're going to come back to how you set that up here in a second. Outfitting, well, pretty much the same as with the, uh, with the shipyard. If you want to have access to the outfitting, if you want to be able to change your modules 
from one to another. That could be stored modules or modules that you have set up for sale. Well, then you will need outfitting. And finally, you have the secure warehouse, which is, well, the black market. Next up, we have the shipyard. Here you can see you can set ship for sales. And these are already grouped into different categories. For instance, if I wanted to say, oh, okay, this is going to be a fleet carrier revolved around trading. So I probably want some cargo ships, maybe. Or maybe some multi-role ships would actually be even better. So here you can see, okay, if I want to have, uh, offer multi-role ships, I will get three anacondas, I will get four crate phantoms, four crate mark twos, and four pythons. And when I then buy it, you see right now I have insufficient balance to buy all these ships. But if I were to buy all these ships, they would then be set up for sale and could be sold at the shipyard. Again, they would be subject to the tariff, so you could make a little bit of credits on it. Remember, as it is right now, these can also only be restocked if you are in a system with a uh, carrier administration. I don't know if that is intended or not, but that is at least how it is right now. Here next, we have the fleet carrier livery. Um, on the beta server, this is not enabled, so there's not really a lot to show here, but this is where you'll be able to set paint jobs and whatever else Frontier's got to offer, if you have any of that. And finally, we have the settings. This is where you control access to your fleet carrier. So here I can set if only my squadron should be able to use it, squadron and friends, or only friends, no one, so it's going to be a truly private fleet carrier only for me, or as I've said it to, everybody is welcome to dock here. Same here, I can set if I want to allow people who have notoriety to dock. I, right now I've allowed it, but if I didn't want that, I could just put that to not allowed. And finally, you can set what activity this fleet carrier is focusing around. Mine's going to be focused around mining, so I could set that here. And that means when people go out here to the navigation panel and they look at their carrier, you can see there's a small mining icon right here to the left of it. And similarly, if people open up, they could then see here at the bottom that it is a mining focused carrier. So you can show to other people what your carrier is doing so they know what they should expect when going to it. And finally, you have the decommissioning system where you can decommission your carrier if you do not want it any longer. Also note, right, I have a warning saying that my carrier is about to be decommissioned. I'm not really sure why. I should have enough money to pay the weekly upkeep. So I think that maybe just something, maybe the first week is weird or there's a bug there. But if you want to decommission it, keep in mind here in the handbook, you can see that if you have had the carrier up to 24 hours, so less than a day, you will get 95 of the original purchase price back. If you have from one to two days, 80%, and it goes down. And if you're over three months, then you're down to, uh, to one third. And also keep note of the little note here at the bottom saying that the, if you are not in a system with a carrier construction dock, so that is the, the free carrier vendors, then you will get a, a further reduction in the return value based on how far you are from the nearest um, from the nearest shipyard or the constructed dock where you can this can be deconstructed or decommissioned. If you want more fleet carrier information as it become available, do go down and hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, and I hope you will enjoy the beta. Thanks so much for watching guys, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.